Hey guys, I'm having really bad issues with my coolant. Um, so over here, here's my coolant, and I have it uh, off right now. And here, let me... So apparently, you're supposed to bring it up to that neck. You see where there, basically the ring is there. Roughly around there is where you're supposed to fill it. And I filled it up there, and then I let it go down, and I fill it more, and I let it go down, and I fill it more. Um, I've even, and this may be a little overboard, but the reservoir there, I've even filled that, which is now completely dried and empty. Uh, I filled it up uh, maybe one fifth of the way, one one fifth, I guess, one sixth. Um, and so I keep giving it coolant, and as far as I can tell, my oil seems to be... I changed my oil, and I've only run it maybe 100 kilometers so far. My oil is pretty clean. Let me get uh, some paper towel here and show you guys. So let's get some paper towel. Oops, sorry. And uh, let me pull my stick out here. Now, I've heard coolant can get in, I guess, if the gasket or something blows, but there's the color of it. Oh, I guess you could take pictures with this as well. That's weird. But anyways, there's the color of it. Um, so it's gotten down a little bit, but I can definitely not smell any kind of antifreeze in it. It smells like plain old crappy oil to me. Uh, not strong scented, not as much as the transmission, which is very... Uh, still the same color as basically out of the bottle. Um, so I don't think, I'm pretty sure my coolant is not leaking into my motor oil. But if it's not leaking there, and if I can't see it actually leak anywhere, where the hell is my coolant going? Uh, I've taken it out three times now, and every time I had to limp home basically on my trips because I would run out of coolant to the point where my coolant light would be going off, and actually, I don't know if it is on right now or not. No, it's not on right now. Which is funny because, as far as I can tell, there's no coolant in the system right now at all. So, yeah, after I run it for a while, then it comes on. Here's another question. I read in the manual, you should not have this tight. So, the picture of it when you're putting it on was sort of like this so this is one turn and it says sort of like that something like that not too tight which doesn't make sense because I tried doing that and when I was <laughs> about like five minutes later I think the pressure blew out of there and it put the antifreeze on my motor and all of a sudden smoke was everywhere thankfully I'm pretty sure it was just that I shut it down waited till it cooled down threw water onto it and then I sealed this right tight. But uh, for some reason, they said in the manual to not put it too tight. Well, unfortunately, this goes only to a certain tightness. Like, that's it. There's no, there's no uh, screw to it. So it's always that tight. And I don't know why it would have different instructions on don't put it too tight. Because that doesn't quite, you know, make sense to me. Um, but honestly, I'm worried that I'm going to end up... And I don't think I can seize it. I mean, it's a diesel engine, a Lombardi. I don't think I'll end up seizing it, but I am worried that I'm doing some damage to it when it's getting overheated. Though I don't run it too long, I usually head home right away. Uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, some people say your radiator may need cleaning. Uh, completely take it out. I've done this flashlight thing that people say to do, and basically I put the flashlight in here, and... It's hard to actually see it right through, but I can, it looks clean. You can actually kind of see right through it. You can see the daylight through there. So <laughs> I'm not quite sure what's going on there because it's pretty, it's pretty clean back there. The fan is running. I know the fan is going on and the temperature seems to go. So when it gets hot, it goes on. I just, I don't understand. I'd pretty sure there is no leak yet it's acting like it's leaking oh and here's another one i didn't tell you guys 
it boils away like crazy. Uh, a lot of the time, um, it's actually boiling. So when it starts, like when I see that light, if I turn off the engine completely right there and then and get out, I can actually hear it boiling inside of here. Uh, it sounds like there's a boiling movement. So I'm not sure. I've done it where I filled it and then let it, you know, go down the tube a bit and fill it and down, fill it down. I mean, I must have put, oh, crap, like three or four water bottles worth anyways after the trip from yesterday in last night or whatever and ran it today and, you know, did only about, you know, 25, 30 kilometers and then, you know, the light was coming on again. But I can't seem to find an actual leakage. It just seems to be, I don't know, disappearing. So either it's boiling and evaporating which you think I would see a lot of smoke somewhere. Um, and another trick I hear is if you're leaking antifreeze or the coolant into your engine, into the oil, um, you can get white smoke out of your exhaust. My exhaust seems to be perfectly fine uh, in that sense. So <sighs> the only other thing I can think of is to uh, dismantle the entire fan here and take the rat out and try to clean it by hand maybe that'll help um that's a long damn process but honestly i can't find a leak um and it's pretty airtight as well like that valve when i open it i just opened it before but when i usually open that valve after it's been sitting for a while you can hear the pressure lock on it so if there was a leak you don't think there would be probably a pressure lock anymore as well so I don't know what the hell is going on, to be honest. There's the, you know, the pipe there. Now, is this supposed to be that color? Is this supposed to be that dark, like, green, dully color into it? I don't really know. Was it always like that? I have no clue. Let me check over here. This is the same color here. See this? Is this supposed to be that color? That ghostly greenish color to it I wonder if how tight that is I'm worried if I take this off I'll never get back on here oh it doesn't seem too tight actually yeah I better not god what do you have to use it must be a special tool to get that on there but if you look there see the the black there that looks clean but this is very ghost uh, colored I don't know. Let's look over here. The uh, reservoir. 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 Um, trying to look under here. Can we see the tube? Where the hell is the tube for this? <laughs> well, there it is. So, yeah, it's completely dried up. So, I don't know what to say, guys. It's driving me insane because I don't have the money to go and get a mechanic to fix it, but uh, I'm not sure what to say. I'm not sure how deadly this can end up being. I know, though, when I first had this happen and I was quite far away, I tried to make it home and my engine did completely shut off because it overheated. Now I'm hoping when it overheats like that, that that's a safety mechanism and that's not because I'm putting so much stress on the fucking engine that uh, I'm, I'm pretty much killing it because that would be really sad. What is that? $3,000 if I uh, seize the engine. So yeah, I'm no mechanic. I would have to look myself just to take this plastic off. I'm going to have to look on guides and the damn thing has oh, a, uh, a wench on it. So I would end up having to probably um, figure out how to take that off. The only other thing I'm thinking of is, and I've seen uh, videos on it where other people were basically hooking the fan power directly into a switch and then using a switch on 24 seven. So what I could do is if I don't want to drill it into the dashboard, I could put a switch in here and I believe you need to take the, the, the red line and put a fuse on it as well. And I think you can directly hook it to the battery at 12 volt and then actually put a manual uh, fan on it and like literally leave the fan on 24 seven. Uh, when it's running, of course, you don't want to burn out the battery, but that's the only thing I could think of that I could do that wouldn't be too, too hard. Well, it'd be kind of hard for me, but something that's, a, you know, a learning lesson. 
but the fan does work. The blower works. I think the blower is for the belt, but the fan does definitely work. Um, I removed the, when it was really hot, when I turned it off, I removed the blower uh, fuse, and I can hear the fan spinning up, and it's going, like, it's it's at a decent rate, so I'm not sure what to say. Um, hopefully, somebody out there will be able to help me, because this is driving me insane, and it's ruining my ATV fun. Like, I can't even get 40 kilometers, you know, before, well, actually, even 20, to be honest. And I want to add to this, guys. This is in the weather of 20 degrees, which is like, I don't know, is that 70, 80 Fahrenheit? I don't know. 20 degrees Celsius, um, which is pretty cool. It was a cool, damp day today. Um, every day was cool, actually. It was between like 15 and 20. So it wasn't like I was running it in the hot of the summer, you know, middle of the day when the sun's like 30 degrees out. Nothing like that. Uh, it was pretty cool. Um, not too humid, and even then it was still causing some overheating issues. So I don't friggin' know what to say. Um, I'd love to hear some people's advice out there, and hopefully um, I can get this up and running and fixed soon. Um, because it's driving me friggin' insane, and I really want to <laughs> get riding again. So thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I can get a couple sites to post this on. Um, because I don't know what to say. I'm pretty much boned at this point uh, if I can't get this going. But, uh, yeah, thanks, guys. <laughs>